So what's going on guys? I figure it's late at night, it's like midnight here in Florida and uh, it's just been so hot lately and I just got home, I rode the motorcycle home from work and I decided, you know what, I think it's time for a good install day even though it's midnight here in Florida. So first off, I want to let you guys know, I hope there's no echo and I hope you guys can get a really good clear visual of I have as many lights on as I possibly can for y'all. We're going to be doing the Chimera air intake mod. This is a big air intake mod that everybody and it seems like in the Grom community gets. Uh, it has a K&N filter and stuff like that. I got it from Hard Racing. I'll put a link in the, the description below. So that way, if you guys are interested later on, you can buy it. I want to say it was right around $130. So what I can tell so far is that this is actually going to be a pretty quick, fast install. There's really not much you're going to have to do. We will have to take the actual fairings off in order to get to the air box in here. We're going to have to remove the air box. Uh, it's the air temperature sensor I think we have to take off. And uh, where the, the part where this bolts into, this is going to have to be removed. So what we're going to use, I think it's some... Uh, yeah, we're getting Allen keys here and a screwdriver. And that's generally about it because all there is not much to put on there. We're getting rid of that giant nasty air box. We're gonna put the actual bendy uh, pipe here, the actual uh, stabilization bar that goes, connects from here to there to actually hold it together really good. And then just have to put the filter on the front. And generally that's about it. So hopefully it should take us more in about a five or 10 minute video, something like that. And uh, we'll go from there and I'll show you about the best I possibly can here and uh, get you up close the best you can. So I hope you guys really like this little build series. The exhaust is on. The only thing I think I've left to do is basically uh, put the air intake mod in on it. And I think I'm gonna get some different mirrors. I don't like the mirrors I have on there now. And then definitely get a new seat. The stock seat is awful. So these are minor things you're gonna see towards the end there. But basically, everything is the way I like it right now. So let's go ahead and dig into it. All right guys, real quick here. I wanna explain that in order to get to the air box, you're gonna to have to take off the rear fairings all the way through here, there is screws everywhere in here to get this stuff off. So you're gonna have, I don't know, 10 to 15 screws total that are gonna come off. So you're gonna have them under here, you're gonna have them back here, the fairings are here, here, through there, you're gonna have to get the front fairings off, is up here, you're gonna have screws in here, you're gonna have pop rivets here, these gotta come off, there's one down here. I mean, there is gonna be a lot of screws for the newer 2017, 2018 design body style. So get ready for it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll help you out the best I can. There is a couple of videos online that show you where everything is, but you're going to have to remove off the rears in order to even get to up here, okay? And then from there, there's screws back here, 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 inside here. These two have to come off, and then there's some pop rivets down here in the front that you're going to have to get off. So get ready for it. It's a lot more in-depth than I think the earlier versions, Groms, and a lot, lot more than getting off the fairings on the ZX6R over there. So. Get, just letting you go. If you have any questions, you want me to make a video and show you how to get it off, just let me know and I'll be glad to help you all out. Let me go ahead and get to it and make the video a little bit shorter. Real quick, I want to actually show you it now with it all the way off. Everything is good to go. This is a good time to detail, by the way, if you're into detailing like me. Um, you can see there is screws everywhere. So these are the amount of screws that you're going to have to pull off in order to actually get all the fairings off. There's your two pop rivets right there, no push rivets, there's your main bolt, and these are all the ones that have to take off the rear plastic. So. You actually have a lot of uh, bolts and screws that you're going to have to actually remove just to get to the actual plastic. And then after that, it just kind of pulls off. You'll see little tabs. It just pulls straight off. The only thing that it does is, you see this right here? It hooks onto it like this. You have to pull it up and then away. And that's about the only thing you're going to have to do. What I'm kind of worried about when I'm looking at it now is, you know, before I put it in, is because this air box is going to be gone. And this is where the actual tube is going to be for that Chimera end cake is the uh, uh, the fender uh, is gonna have, is it gonna flap or anything like that. I know it has a stabilization bar, so we'll see, but this is just me thinking out loud and letting you guys know what's going on. So here's what a Grom looks like without the fender kit on it. There you go. All right, let me go ahead and we'll go on to the next side and then we'll start with the steps. All right, now that that 10 minutes of pulling all the plastics off is all done, we're gonna actually have to remove a couple of things here and loosen it all up. So first off, we're gonna have to take the air temperature sensor off like this. Be very careful because you will be using this again. Do not screw this up. I remember when I, we did my 370Z, I have to take the mass airflow sensors as well, and there was two of them, and we actually taped it up and we held them back so that they wouldn't even get ruined or anything. And then you have to take the screws off for the actual air box, which is gonna be in the front up here. It's right here, and then of course there'll be one on the other side, and then of course down here, we should be able to actually pull the whole thing off from there. So just giving you guys a heads up. I'm just looking around to make sure there's anything I might miss, and I will be able to tell you if I screwed up later. But yeah, there's a bolt up here as well, so that's generally about it. Then we're gonna have to loosen up down here as well, because the actual, we're gonna get the hosing and stuff like that off. So that's about, generally about all we have to do, just watch this part, the actual temperature sensor 
but I'll put it off to the side. Whatever you have to do, do not hit it and mess it up. That's the only thing I gotta tell you about it. Once you take this off, the bolts and stuff off, then this will just pop right off and then we'll be actually ready to move on from there. So, all right, let's go ahead and get to it. Real quick, now the actual air box is off. I gotta tell you, they want you to easily get these air original uh, OEM air boxes on and off or just to get to the filter. It's a pain in the butt to get this off, let me tell you. So you have to actually uh, pull out some of the hoses. There's only the two bolts. I'm pretty sure they're 10 millimeter bolts that are uh, attached right up in here. That's all that holds it on. This actually sits in a little rubber stopper here, so you gotta pull, pick it up and turn it off. Uh, you'll just have to unloosen this right here. Uh, it's in order to loosen this so you can pull off the hose. And I wanna say there was uh, just some like hoses right through there and a little clamp that goes on here that you have to pull that hose off for. That's about it. But getting it out of this tight compressed place, compressed place is just, it really is insane. It was a, it's a really bad design on my part or on their part for doing that. But now we're actually off. It's gonna be the hard part. Cause now all we gotta do now is put on our little adapter here, the coupler here, put on the pipe that's gonna stick out to here, reattach your actual sensor here, Put on our stabilization bar down here and uh, basically pop patch it all together. So finally we're done. This has got to be one of the longest installs I will have personally done on the Grom so far. But uh, everybody says it's worth it and obviously it's going to free up some weight too. So good thing there. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'll be more than glad to help you. But Dan, getting that box out of that little tight spot was a bit of a pain. A little bit of wiggle room in order to turn it over and then get it out because it was stuck here and actually seated in there pretty good. So just giving you guys a heads up. Let's go ahead and put the coupler on and then we'll move on from there. All right, now we're ready to go. I put ahead and put the sensor way up out of the way. What we're gonna use is the coupler right here. Uh, whenever you put it on, just make sure you can actually access the screws. But you don't wanna be that guy that, uh, or the girl that is, that might be watching this later on where the screws are there and you can't even access it. So what we're gonna do is we'll put one end on here. We'll go ahead and tighten it down to go ahead and lock it on there. And then what we'll be doing is actually putting the actual pipe on this end in, uh, actually, I'm sorry, on that way. And then we're gonna go ahead and lock it in there. So you guys get the uh, general idea of what you need to be doing here. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is loosen up here, stick it on, tighten it up, and then get the other, uh, we can go ahead and put the top end of the piping in there and move on from there. So let's go ahead and get back to it. And you can see where the other stuff plugs in that I had to unplug from this side. You'll understand what I mean if you guys got this. You'll have to actually unplug. And where's that? It's actually right here. And then it, so you unplug it from here and then it'll plug in over here, so. Pretty cut and dry. Let's go ahead and get to it. Next time you'll see me, we'll be here. All right, welcome back. Pro tips here to go ahead and make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, here's the hose I was telling you about. It, it normally goes through here and goes around to the back side of this air box and connects right here. Just giving you guys a heads up. So I kind of pulled it back out and plugged it in there. So that's how I got it personally in there for myself. You guys might be having different opinions on the way to do it. Uh, I did it probably a little bit back asswards here, uh, like usual, like me being a rookie noob. Uh, the actual uh, sensor that I actually told you to unplug, you should probably go ahead and screw that in first before you put it actually in here, seated in here. And here's why. It's gonna be very hard for you to access the Allen key, Allen key bolts right here that you're gonna have to screw in on both sides. It's very hard to get it in there unless you have a smaller one. It was a bit of a pain in the butt for me. Going, looking back, I should have done it first. Then I should have connected it to the coupler and then tied down from there. But uh, other than that, it's actually been, I can tell we're starting to move along a lot faster now. So next thing we want to do is just basically kind of uh, fit the actual k intake filter up here. And uh, that's generally about it. We're wrapping it up right now. So it's going to be a little bit kind of like that. And we're generally about done. And then we just gotta put all the plastics on. So this is what all you have to do. You just kind of slide that sucker on there like that, like so. Loosen up your actual collar and then slide it over and make it nice and tight. And generally, that's about it. So yeah, first off, connect your sensor, then put the actual tube in the coupler and tighten it down. Don't do it backwards like I did it. And generally, uh, that's about it. And uh, we'll be done with it, putting the uh, stuff back on. We're gonna have to put the brace the bar brace here that's going to connect through here to actually hold the fairings really nice and tight and generally that's it so let's go ahead and wrap it up and uh, i'll see you in two seconds when we get ready to apply the brace all right y'all ready here we go let's go ahead and start it up sounds pretty good sounds pretty good gonna go 
ahead and killed it because it is pretty late at night now and it's almost one o'clock in the morning and we're basically done. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the plastic on fairings and we'll be good to go. I am gonna go ahead and polish up through here, getting my little nasty fingerprints off. Even though you'll never see it, it's just peace of mind for me because I detail as a hobby, as you guys might probably know from my other YouTube channel. So here we go, let's clean up and we're done. All right, all the fairings are back on as you can easily see here. What I did wanna show you is, can you see the bracing bar now? There it is right there. And there's the K&N air filter right there. Make sure that it's actually up and down. Don't be the guy that's like has it upside down or something. It just looks tacky. But back to on point, you see how it actually connects in here. So what it is on the 20, the newer ones, it's this bolt right here. This bolt is fine. This is the one that will actually connect to the rod right here on both sides. And as I was totally uh, screwed up and said, you will have to actually remove these from the inside. All they do is completely uh, from whence the, there's no bar in there, just pull them to the side like this. Or you could use a needle nose pliers or your fingers and pull it off the side and they pop out like that. One from each side. That way the screw fully seats in the actual stabilizing bar the entire way solid. And as you can tell, everything is completely solid again. You can see the whole bike is rocking back and forth. And now that I've actually uh, put the bike back together more than once now, I can actually make a fairings video, uh, fairing removal video if you guys would like to see that. Please leave me a comment below and I'd be glad to help you guys out. All I am about to do on this channel is to show you what I do, the mods and stuff like that, and help you guys out, fellow Gromers, DX6R people and stuff like that, if you have any questions. So there you go, it is ready. You've already heard it start up. It is one o'clock in the morning. It took me a lot longer than I honestly thought it was gonna be. It took me about an hour. But now the looking back, it would probably take me no more than 20 minutes, honestly. But I really try to show you step by step and go from there. So please, if you have any questions, make sure you let me uh, know in the comments below and I'll be very glad to help you out. And I'll let you know how well it does later on. I might be doing a power commander, stuff like that sometime later, a dyno run on it. But for now, this is the way I'm gonna run it. So I hope you guys really like it. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up and I will see you all at the very next Grom Series build. Take care, y'all.